May Gamedi, it's Women's Month in South Africa, and as the first citizen of Ugu, what is your message to the people who are watching this video as the mayor of Ugu? Johan, Ugu, as you know, comprises of a, quite a, a huge number of uh, women, women percentage, like in, in the entire country and in the whole world. Women comprise at least 52 percent of our population in Oku. So the main, main challenge in the district is the issues of unemployment and poverty. We are saying to our women, you must stand up, wake up, do something for yourselves. We are there for you. We are encouraging you as women to be brave. Look after those young people at home. We are currently faced with a very serious challenge of drug and substance abuse. We are faced with a situation where our women are getting raped on a daily basis. And we are saying to you, if you don't stand up and talk about these things and look after your families such that they don't become criminals at the end of the day, we are going to lose it as women. We are saying we are very proud of you as women, trying your best to make your your, social, your communities work. We see you forming cooperatives. We are seeing you in business. We are seeing you in the workplace. And we are saying also to you, because when we, when we talk about women, we are talking about educators and we are talking about leaders, encourage those young ones to go to school, because without education, really there is very little that we can achieve. We know we've got quite a number of young women that are currently unemployed after achieving their degrees and their tertiary education and so on. But we are saying to you, nothing is lost. Whatever certificate you have, it's, it's yours. Keep on trying. Whatever kind of job you come across, take it. That is where you will build your future. May Gamedi, when one listens to you and other women, the main problem seems to be men. So what is your message to the men in these women's lives? I am saying to the men, men, we love you. Uh, we honor you. We adore you. And for, for, for the women to, success, to be successful, you should be there for them. Don't harass those women. Love them. Support them. They need you at all costs. And in fact, when we talk about sexual harassment, harassment, we are not talking about real men. We are talking about something else. Real men do not harass women. They don't sexually abuse women. They don't sexually abuse children, but they, 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 they actually protect them. So we need your protection. Look after us. We love you. Some of these real men have said to me that Women's Month and Women's Day and Women's Affairs, when they speak about it, the real men also get bashed in the process. They, they, you know, they're paying the price for the, uh, you know, for the unreal. Or the, not, what, do if, what do you say to that? If you look at that percentage, Johan, the percentage of men that get bashed, it's only a handful as compared to the women that get bashed every day. Unfortunately, those women don't talk about these things. And they don't want to stand their ground. And we are saying to the women that get best, stand your ground, know your rights, and exercise your rights. Because you do have rights. No man is allowed to, to bash any woman. Neither does any woman, is any woman allowed to bash any man. In the country that you are living in, no one is allowed to assault any other. But unfortunately, what happens with men is that if they, they can't talk about these things, it's like a disgrace if a man reports that he's been bashed by a, by a woman. Even if they go to the police station, they get ridiculed. That is just unfortunate. But we don't, our men, we don't want our men to be abused by women either. Yeah, uh, what, what I actually also meant, I agree with what you said, but uh, what, I mean, what I meant was that some of the men who are real men who don't who don't abuse women in the process, they also get criticised, and they are, you know, they are they are being regarded also as um, women abusers and women rapists. 
I, I don't think that is the case. They, they, they really shouldn't be uh, uh, looked at as, 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 as men who are, who are abusers. But uh, I think the main thing is understanding the concept of uh, being a man and woman. Men are actually there to protect women. Then a very sensitive question, and I, I, I won't mind if you don't answer it. About a year ago, you mentioned your own personal experience in your life before you became mayor and before, I think you were a teacher, weren't you? Yeah, I was a nurse. Or you were a nurse. Yeah. Uh, you, you, at, at, at a public meeting, you tell the people there about your private life and what you experience. Are you willing to tell the people who are watching this video? No, honestly, the reason I kept sp talking about myself is because as a leader, I wanted to, to, to people to know that these things do not happen to certain individuals. It can happen to anyone. I, I, even the, 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 the president, if there was anything like a president, woman, woman president in South Africa, these things are easy to happen because of the wrong choices that we make. I think I, I had myself to blame because I must have made a, a wrong choice when I got married. But uh, as I, I, ke I keep saying, I made a wrong choice and unfortunately in the process of my marriage, I became like a, I, I, I don't know how to call it, but I, I was like a punch bag. My husband would demand every cent that I had. If I didn't produce that cent, mine was to get punches and uh, be assaulted, harassed, uh, insulted, and done all sorts of things. But uh, I couldn't stand this. I, I stood this one for quite a long time. Whenever he felt well, we had fought, he would run away for three months or so. And when he came back, the only thing I would receive were punches again to say you've been sleeping with other men and so on and so forth. But then this went on. I remember I was married from 1988 and I was receiving this kind of treatment. In 1994 I said no, enough is enough. And that is when I took, I took off and I left this man. Looking back, did you wait too long? Uh, any message in there for other women? Should they not do it when they, you know, immediately? Or how, how much time must one give a marriage to succeed? Unfortunately for women, there is this thing called tolerance. You, when, when somebody abuses you, you think it's something that happens today. Tomorrow it might get better. And you, you, you look at the betterment of the situation, which eventually doesn't happen. And for a woman, it takes very long to say, I am giving up. And by the time you give up, it's too late. But ne it's ne I, I feel, I, for myself, I felt it was never too late. Because at least I had something to do. I was working and I could carry on. I was able to educate my children. And here I am today. God has blessed me and uh, I am in the position that I am in. Yeah, and look where you are today. You're a mother. How many children? I'm a mother of three. And, uh, and tell us about them. I have uh, one son, unfortunately, who is late, who passed on in 2008, leaving behind a wife and two kids. And uh, my daughter has got two kids. She's just about to get married. Uh, my, my youngest son is still a bachelor <laughs> all by himself. He's currently a lecturer at the FET College site. How old is he now? He is 29. Uh, the good thing is that all my kids are graduates and they, all, their, all their education came from me. Nobody contributed to their education. I have now four grandchildren and they are, I, I live with my grandchildren and they're all happy. Lovely, Madam. I can see in your eyes you're a very happy person. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you very much, Johan. I, I always like to share these things with, with women. Like seated here today, we are having a, 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 a summit with the women in local government 
in this very hotel. And we are, these are some of the things that we are sharing with the women. That to be a leader, really, you need, it, 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 you need to, 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 to be focused. And we are saying we are lacking women leaders in our country. And we are actually saying to them, they must learn, study, 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 so that in, in future we see them in more and more higher positions. Politics doesn't make it easier, does it? It does. Well, you can do anything in politics. You can study, you can work, you can be competent, you can do everything in politics. Isn't politics a bit of a dirty game? Don't, 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 I mean, isn't it a game for men only? It depends how, how you perceive it to be. For is, it, is it dirty? Not really. It's about, it's about uh, servicing, service to the community. That is how I perceive it to be. Because if, if in the night I hear that you don't have water in your home, I spend a very sleep, sleepless night because I can imagine what it is that you are feeling. Because what, how do you live without water? It's, I'm just citing one example. In fact, it's having more feelings for the community than polit politics is something else. But You're concentrating on service delivery. Service delivery in my community. Madam Mayor, thank you very much. Thank it's you been very, very enjoyable. Thank you very much, Johan, for the opportunity.